Welcome to Mucon's hardware. A couple of weeks ago I have tested E5 2697v3 against i3-12100 in a couple of online FPS shooters. In some of the games I have received pretty bad performance with the Xeon E5 CPU because the 0.1% low FPS numbers were rather bad. In some cases the gaming experience was not enjoyable and in case of Battle Beat Remastered it was uh, outright impossible to play the game and enjoy it. After that video I have received a couple of comments where people suggested me to enable FPS cap to reduce the FPS drops with the Xeon E5 CPU and eliminate the unknown starters in the game. I do not like this solution because, for example, if you play Battlefield, then on one map you can get about 90 FPS on average, on another map you can get 120 FPS on average. So in this case, to completely eliminate the lags, you need to set your FPS cap to about 88 or 85 FPS. And this means that even on the map that has possibility to run with your hardware at 120 FPS, you're still limiting yourself to 85 FPS. So I thought about this problem and then I remembered that, that AMD has a feature that's called AMD Anti-Lag. If you're interested to understand how exactly this feature works and see some in-depth comparisons, there are multiple online videos available on this subject, but in short, AMD Anti-Lag works kinda like FPS cap, but automatic FPS cap. So for example, on the map where we can deliver maximum 90 FPS, the FPS cap would be somewhere around 85-88 FPS. But on the map that can deliver about 120 FPS on average, the FPS cap would be somewhere around 115-117 FPS. So I decided to test this AMD anti-lag feature with the Xeon E5 CPU. And of course, I did not expect any magical results from AMD anti-lag, because after all, it's a simple toggle in the driver settings. So I thought, how much of a difference could it be? But I was very positively surprised of how much of a difference AMD anti-lag can do when you have disproportionately faster graphics card compared to your CPU. So with this, let's go into the test results. So let's start with PUBG, because in this game we have possibility to record a gameplay and then replay it, so I can do direct one-to-one -to -one FPS comparison. In my previous test I have got 3589 FPS, and this time with AMD anti-lag enabled I am getting 3876 FPS. So the average FPS is slightly worse with AMD anti-lag, but the 0.1% low FPS is slightly better. But what's most important is that with AMD anti-lag I am not getting this amount of unknown stutters that are ruining the gameplay. Especially you can see the difference when driving in a car. When AMD anti-lag is disabled, the game is so stuttery that it's next to impossible to even aim. But if I enable AMD anti-lag, the game is perfectly playable, even though here and there you may get some stutters. So I never expected such a good result from AMD anti-lag, that's a simple feature in the drivers, but here we are, AMD anti-lag works flawlessly and it turns the gaming experience from horrible to very much enjoyable. The next game is gonna be Battle Beat Remastered, but unfortunately here I was not able to reproduce my previous result with unplayable experience where the game would start it to about 3 FPS on minimum. Battle Beat Remastered has received another update between my two tests and now the game supports more than 200 players, so I assume that they have done some extra optimization and in this case, after this update, even without AMD anti-lag, I am getting playable experience. In this case, I ended up at 4150 FPS, but if I enable AMD anti-lag, the results are 66 and 151 FPS. So the average FPS is about the same, but the minimal or 0.1% low FPS is significantly better with AMD anti-lag. Even though after the update the game is playable without AMD anti-lag, the gaming experience is significantly better with AMD anti-lag enabled. With this feature I have basically no complaints about Battle Beat Remastered with this Uni5 CPU. I could play like this whole day long. The last game I'm going to talk about is Battlefield 2042. The last time I have got 4040 FPS when testing without AMD anti-lag. This time when testing with AMD anti-lag enabled I have got 5073 FPS. 
Unfortunately, these numbers cannot be compared one to one because I could not get enough test results with the same map. In Battlefield 2042, you cannot select the map you want to play, and the map is random. So after a while, I just gave up trying to find the map that I need for one-to-one -one comparison and just played whatever maps I was offered. Nevertheless, I'm happy to report that this time the gaming experience was significantly better. Previously, I complained that the game would stutter at the very important moment when I need to do some quick reaction and do something in response to some enemy actions that are happening around me. The game would stutter, the game would lag, and I would die. This time, the gaming experience was significantly much better and there were significantly less these stuttery annoying moments and I end up playing one round after another after another. What I can say for the conclusion, even though the era of budget gaming computers with the Xeon 5 CPUs is about to end, we still see that E5 2697V3 is a very capable and very viable alternative to i3-12100. Of course, you need to understand all the pros and cons about these two platforms, but if you can assemble a gaming computer with E5 CPU that's gonna cost you significantly less than the i3-12100 option or Ryzen 5 5600 option, then I would say it's a very viable alternative. You just need to understand how it works and make sure to enable all the required tweaks. We need to start with the Turbo Boost Unlock, then we need to enable Resizable Bar, and finally we need to enable AMD Anti-Lag in the driver's options. If you use NVIDIA graphics card, then you have the same feature, but in the case of NVIDIA, it's called NVIDIA Reflex. For myself, I'm yet again very surprised with how much performance we can squeeze out from this old Xeon E5 2697V3 CPU. I did not expect that these old CPUs with maximum turbo frequency of just 3.5 GHz will be able to compete on such a decent level with a modern i3-12100 that runs at about 4.3 GHz. And with this I have to say, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope it was interesting, and I hope I have helped someone. Bye for now.